This is the fourth of four examples of iteration using the while loop. In this particular problem, we are given a vector and we must return, I'll put it up here, we must return uh, the maximum value in that vector. Okay. Uh, once again, we've done this problem before using the for loop, which I will re-illustrate. And then I will compare and contrast that to the while loop. So for the for loop, let's say we're given some vector v equals 26, 42, 87, 13, and 5. And we're going to, we're not accumulating a vector in this one, we're actually just accumulating a scalar value and we'll call that variable maxi and we're going to initialize uh, the value for our answer um, to uh, v sub 1 and so and that's just as we did before and then the for loop comes along so we can iterate through for x equals keep on, we start this one off at 2 because we've already set maxi equal to v1 so we're going to start our indexing off at 2 um, through the length of v. And so we set up our indexing method for the for loop over here and then we do our test if v sub x is greater than maxi then maxi equals or gets v oops, v sub x okay and then we end that and then we end our if end our for and then we'll display maxi. Okay. All right. Um, over here on the while loop side, keep in mind, uh, and this is a good time to stop the video, give it a try with the while loop, and see, and then start the video back up and see if you got what I got. So over here, keep in mind, we have to do the initializing. We have to initialize. We have to inspect loop variable for a terminating condition and we must increment the loop variable so v equals 26 42 87 13 5 maxi equals v1 so as of now these are identical now they change a bit now I must initialize my loop variable I'm going to once again call it x. This time I'm going to initialize it to 2 because that's what happened over here in the for loop. So we initialize it to 2, which is perfectly fine. While x is less than or equal to the length of v. Um, that, and this is our, incre our, excuse me, our inspection stage. And so we'll do that. And we say if v of x is greater than maxi. We'll do our work part of the loop versus we would do our work part of the um, while code block. Once we've done our work, now we just must do the incrementing part, which increments there. And then we end our while loop. And then we display max. Okay. All right, um, so once again, just like I did with the other examples, this for loop here gets translated over here as our initializing, our inspection, and our incrementing. Following this code through, uh, we start off with v equals this vector, uh, maxi equals one so we start off we'll keep track of maxi this time over here and uh, maxi gets the value of one um, excuse me no it doesn't maxi gets the value of v indexed at one which is 26 um, x gets two x starts off as two this time which is a little different than the other problems but that's perfectly fine um, we check is two and the length of v is five once again so is two less than or equal to five yes it is so we enter our code block the work part here, and we do work up here, and then we increment 
down here, which is the last thing we do, which is the common place to put the incrementing part of the while loop. So here on the work part, we do if um, v of x, x is 2, v is x is 42, is 42 greater than maxi? Well, maxi is presently 26, 42 is greater than 26, so maxi now gets v of 2, which now maxi now becomes 42. We've done our work, now we come down here and increment, x equals x plus 1, which means x gets incremented by 1, x now equals 3. Back up to the top of the loop. Is 3 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So we come here to if statement, and we say is v indexed at 3 greater than maxi? So v indexed at 3 is 87. Is 87 greater than 42? Yes, it is. So maxi now gets uh, the value of the index of 3 which is 87. Uh, we come down here to the increment. We've done our work. We come down here in increment. x equals x plus 1. So now x equals 4. Is 4 less than or equal to 5? Yes it is. So is v um, at 4 indexed at 4 greater than maxi? Is 13 greater than 87? No it's not. So you don't do that. You work there and you come down here and you increment again so now x equals 5. Back at the top, is 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. So you come down here and you say v indexed at 5, which is happens to be the number 5. Is that greater than or equal to 87? Uh, no, it's not. So you don't do anything in the work part. And you come down here and you increment again, x equals 6. Go back up to the top of the while loop. Is 6 less than or equal to 5? No, it is not. And so you exit the while loop. And now you display in the command area the value of maxi, which is 87. And that is how the while loop is implemented there. Um, so those are four examples. This concludes the, the four example phase of the while loop. Uh, there's another uh, thing about while loops I want to explain, which I'll explain in the next segment. Um, and it deals with what happens if you do not set up this properly, um, if you do not set up your incrementing properly or your terminating condition properly or your initialization properly and the loop this part of the loop the inspection part never evaluates the false if that happens you get what's called a continuous loop and I want to um, explain it and then um, I'll show it again in the um, when I get to the MATLAB section uh, this is the MATLAB illustration of example 4 um, dealing with maxes and iteration implementation with while loop. Start as we've done with, start as we've done with the other ones. We'll clean the slate, make sure that our variables are clear so that when we look at them in the workspace in the command window, we know we're looking at the variables that are pertaining to the execution of this script. Uh, all right, so I've uh, indicated this does max, and we're doing it with the while loop. So just like over on the for loop side, uh, while so this is the vector with e we're going to use. We're going to set up our sort of results variable, our results scalar, uh, and we're going to initialize that scalar value instead of being empty. We're going to initialize or zero or one. We're going to initialize it to the first value in vector v. Now we have to do our initializing, so x equals. Now, um, if you look over here, when we implement it on line 8, we start our indexing at 2. So we'll do the same thing over here, so x equals 2. Uh, that's our initializing of our loop variable. Now we'll do our while loop. We'll put in our inspection, while x is less than or equal to the loop of v. And then we'll do our test if v indexed to x is greater than maxi. Oops. Um, v maxi equals v indexed to x. In that, so that is the work portion of our uh, while uh, code block. So we need to now increment our loop variable x. So we do that that way as before. Now we can end our while loop, and then we will finish by displaying the value of max. Okay. Um, as before, um, after I save this, as before, I'm going to put in some break values here so we can see the execution. 
Okay, so as you can see, I have stuff in my command window, my workspace left over from the last example, but when I do this clean slate stuff up here, it will it will disappear. So we execute, as you can see, they will have cleared out. We have V equal to 26, 42, 87, 13, and 5, which is correct. So uh, there you go in the workspace. Maxi will get the first value in V, which is 26. The while loop will start. And X will be, excuse me, initialized as 2, and the while loop will start. 2 is less than the length of V, which in this case, again, is 5. So 2 is less than 5. I do the check. Is V index to 2 greater than Maxi? Yes, it is. So I execute line 11. Maxi now equals V index to 2. So Maxi now equals 42. Um, I go down to line 14. Um, X gets incremented by 1, and I'm back to the I go, and then I'm back to the top of the loop. X is now 3. Is 3 less than 5? Yes, it is. I go down. Is V indexed at 3 greater than Maxi? So is uh, 87 greater than 42? Yes, it is. So therefore, Maxi now becomes 87. Um, go down to line 14. X gets incremented again. I'm back to the top of the loop. X equals 4. And so the next thing is on line 10 is V indexed at 4, which is 13 greater than 87. No, it's not. So I skip down to line 14. Um, and X gets incremented once again by 1. And we jump back. So X is now 5. Is 5 less than or equal to 5? Yes, it is which 5 is the length, also the length of V. So then I say, um, I go down to line 10, is uh, V indexed at 5, which also is the value 5. Is that greater than uh, 87? No, it's not. So I jump down to line 14. X now gets incremented by 1. So now X becomes 6 over here. Um, I jump back to the top. And, and on line 9, I test again, is 6 less than or equal to the length of V? The length of V is 5, so no, it's not. Uh, so I jump out of the loop, exit the loop, and um, I'm at line 16 now. And now I display the value of maxi, the value of maxi, which is 87. And so that's the execution. So those four examples, step-by-step, uh, -step going through, looking at the execution, comparing and contrasting to the four. Once again, the for statement does the initializing, the inspection, and the incrementing all self-contained. Whereas here in the while loop, you have to initialize. In this case, here on line 8, you have to inspect the value to see if you're getting, if you've reached your terminating condition. Here that's done on line 9 inside the while loop, excuse me, in, at, right after the while command. And then inside the while loop, uh, or it's, you have to, the code block is sort of broken up between the work that's being done and then the incrementing part that you have to do to increment. Again, initialize, inspect, and increment. Uh, the next video I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do is going to illustrate um, what happens if you sort of do an error in here and you create what's called an infinite loop and then how to exit that infinite loop. So that will be the next video.